Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I fixed it. We're now recording. I saw their issues. So um welcome to open minds, open mic, the place to be on a Friday night. We have a very special delight for you. Um I consider this man one of my brothers. He has just such a way with words and um, imagery and just passion for what he does. And every time I see him, I can't help but smile. This man just exudes love and positivity. And I've been waiting like, what, 10 months? When did we schedule this? Months ago. And so I'm so excited to uh, feature Zomkanto tonight. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an excellent night. I'd like to start tonight off with a poem that I have written for you, Zonkanto. Um, the title, uh, I'm still kind of wavering on, but I think I'm just going to call it Brother. Tectonic plates smash together, pushing mountains higher. Electronic states of matter pulling oceans lower. Chronic fates subscatter notions over atom smashers. Created in a supernova, our souls are connected forever, affiliated in future hours. Scrolls motivated selected powers, our blood holds the same past. A bond that lasts forever. A song made of gold we grasp and sing together. Whether we cry or laugh, fly high skyward, acquired knowledge and power passed on through generations. We seem to be facing a place of significance. Let's make the best of it. Influence the youth to seek truth. Do it for me. Do it for you. Few can reach a state to teach, preach a better new. We are all one family. Thankfully, we choose love and light, hugs, not fight, right the wrongs that left the blight. Bless the blind with the gift of sight. Enlighten those lost souls with a bit of bliss tonight. Maybe recite a poem that grows on them. Show them we are all one. Chosen, we have all one. Let's celebrate. Demonstrate pure love, rejuvenate our souls from above. Boom. That was beautiful. That was, that was actually beautiful. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. cool. <laughs> it was inspired by you and to you, so I, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Much love, always. Very motivational piece. A great start. Right? To a wonderful night. So, speaking of which, the first person on the open mic list, we have, um, I think, all of our spiritual guys, he's he's our all of our big brother. Um, I love and respect this man so much. Lantern Carrier, if you would be so kind as to bless us with some of your words, we would appreciate it. Most certainly, my brother. <clears throat> I'm sitting here in Jamaica, Queens, trying to cope with the heat. Right, homage to the light. She dries the copious tears spilling from my broken dreams, the heaviness of loneliness the stains of deep remorse. Gently, she parts the roses covering the scars where thorns once sat enmeshed in a foliage of desires. You've done well, she whispers. The light that shines within has erased the darkness of a shadowed past. Arise, my sweet, sweet angel. The brute of past regrets shall no more shine. The fragrance of the dawn is gleaming. I felt my shoulders breathe. My heart cried tears of joy. The soul now laughing with the sun. 
She kissed my wounds, no more the toil of suffering and despair, for I was born anew. The voice of freedom sang to me, her bird of hope now perching on my newfound dreams of love divine, my lack of expectations. I bowed, paid homage to the light, paid homage to the light. That was poem one. Poem two, let me find it, I'm almost there. Fruits and vegetables, the color of health, a theme given by the New Yorkian cafe. Rain falls sometimes in torrents, nurturing the soil like it does my soul, a healer, a source of replenishment, like the energy of the sun, bringing many entities together to blossom into new life. Parents' resilience, fortitude, and sacrifice are quite similar. They act as sustenance for the young, offering the hearts of concern, affection, and love, similar to the ways of the rain and sun. The soil, like a baby, is enriched, its fruits and vegetables nourished, colored with the radiance of vibrant health. Fruits and vegetables are a life source, giving us vigor and dynamism. They make our minds alert, supplying the life-giving prana for love to manifest its glory in and through the vessels of its consciousness. We stay radiant and healthy when our food is nutritious and balanced with fruits and vegetables playing a major role in its function. Holiness hides and teaches in the goodness of earth. A tree, when it is laden, bends and offers its fruits to mankind, even as root vegetables sprout out, both offering the fertility and humility to teach us meekness. Love is the very breath of being, the pulse of life. It is she who hides in the fruits and vegetables, giving them the color of health, like an authentic mango, succulent, juicy and delicious. It is lip-licking good, delicioso. Love and I talk all night, sometimes, of the wonder of creation, the fullness of the multiverse, the serene snow-white moon glistening on the sound of silence, our only listening companion to Mother Gaia's plenitude. Fruits and vegetables blend, shaping my physicality and detoxifying poisons in my blood and cells. Juice carrots enhances the beauty and appearance of my melanin, my face, cheeks, and eyes. An apple a day keeps ailments at bay. Prunes cleanses me, even as sweet potatoes sing songs to the delight of my taste buds, and the berry family portrays the perfect hue of arterial health. Add some beet and dandelion, so the liver becomes cheerful, alert, and satisfied. If fruits be the mercy of love, then vegetables are the backbone of patience and tolerance, growing with simplicity, yet tasty, abundant, and self-giving. They lack the anxiety and restlessness of the animal, are milder, gentler, and more soothing to the spirit. Bring me the fruits and vegetables of life, harmony and goodness, and I will give you vigor, earnestness, a life of love and longing, a happiness so complete that it touches the crown of paradise. Lantern Carrier, thank you. Lantern, my brother. Um, did anyone else feel a little generalissimo? coming from that but like from lantern carrier's perspective with the fruit and i think you know how generalissimo likes to uh throw the food in and make all of us salivate you know and london, london is the fruit of love he is right oh that was so beautiful thank you so I had much a little help because the new um, gave the theme 
the theme is from the New York and the, the words are all mine, but the theme came from New York and Cafe. Yeah. Which big shout outs to New Yo. We love everyone there. Most of y'all came from there and I appreciate everyone that came from there. That are, you could basically take it whatever direction you want to, really. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you so much. Everybody, do me a favor. Unmute yourself and give all the love you have for Lance and Carrier. Great job. <laughs> thank you, thank you, that thank was you. That was gorgeous. Thank you. What a beautiful way to start. Yeah, well. Start tonight. Like, I love that he always shows us so early because then I could throw him first because it like sets the pace and the tone and the energy for the for the whole room, and it's it's so beautiful. We we really appreciate you, Anthony. We appreciate everything that you do for for us. Not even just in the poetry room, but you know outside, right? And, um, yeah, we really appreciate that. Coming up next, we have another wonderful poet, um, D. Allen. Um, D. Allen, if you would wish to uh, share screen, let me know. I can make you co-host. I'm going to leave the share screen feature out of this tonight, so I'm going to do something completely different. And the two poems I'm gonna to do tonight happen to come from the new anthology book, Letters for the End Times, volume one. And I'm gonna dedicate my portion of the open mic tonight to someone who's coming to Open Minds, Open Mic for the second time from the American state of Louisiana, Miss Nona Leah. The first poem is partially personal, partially environmental. You'll know it when you hear it. And this anthology has no page numbers in it at all, which is weird to me, but I'll roll with it. This is called FRAC, spelled F-A-R-A-C-K, FRAC. 1979. Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern time gave the males and my family a good excuse to flock to the living room in front of the big wooden flow model TV after another baked chicken dinner and catch an episode of our favorite science fiction show, Battlestar Galactica. Colonial warriors versus Cylon Raiders, starfighter battles in space had us Alan Watkins holiday males amped up and cheering. Occasionally, Starbuck, the Galactica's cigar chomping, womanizing, a starfighter pilot would spit one word when he was aggravated. Frack. Funny sounding word, almost like, well, I incorporated that peculiar word into my own boyhood life, such as it was. At home, Aunt Frieda made sticky ham hocks and chalky lima beans for dinner, and I thought, frack. In the living room, I would take a, nah, in the classroom, I would take a math test and fail with flying colors, frack. In the school hallway, a bully would spot me, chase me, doom me to a motiveless beatdown, frack. Little did I know, as I became older, the word frack would come to describe a process using an, un an unholy witch's brew, water, sand, and chemicals to force out from shell, rock, and soil, vertically, horizontally, the thick black stuff. Crude oil, one of the leading causes of an ecology gone erratic, extremes in cold, wind, heat, dryness. Greenhouse Act in full effect. And that first poem was called Frack. And to this day, Battlestar Galactica is one of my favorite science fiction TV programs of all time. The 1978 version, not the 2006 version. 
And the last one is based on actual places and current events that are still going on. And this last poem is called Wilani, spelled W-E-E-L-A-U-N-E-E, -E -E, Wilani. Traditional Muscogee Chalagi land, then seized colonizer war spoils, then slave plantation where planters' families' wealth was made, then city prison farm, sharecropping as a penalty slowly reverted to healthy green forest as it was in years of yore. Forces of entertainment and law enforcement have alternate visions for 350 wooded acres, amused the public with films of white knuckle action, trained a new recruits for our repression, high speed car chases, late night drug raids, house to house searches, combative crowd control, mo explosions, then a Hollywood summer box office hit. Bullets fly, replacing birds inside an artificial city. To the woods and their human guest, tragedy strikes both ways. Chainsaws ready to cut, bulldozers move to clear. The vision of 98% conflicts with this frightening future. Person of conscience was shot defending the forest of South Atlanta, USA. State troopers guns made that certain. Take out one forest protector and many more will take their place. The forest belongs not to the movie industry. The forest belongs not to the police. Wilani belongs to itself. And that last poem was called Wilani, spelled W-E-E, L-A-U-N-E-E. -E. And Wilani is the Muscogee word for a green or brown or yellow river. Muscogee, what the Crick Indians call themselves. Chilagi, my ancestral tribe, what the Cherokee Indians call themselves, pronounced Chalagi. And both poems come from the new anthology, Letters for the End Times, volume one now available from Collapse Press, brand new. From this mic to your ears, I'm D. Allen. Thanks for listening. D, thank you so much. Uh, wow. I actually have uh, some seminal in me uh, from South Florida. And, you know, the, uh, George, I lived in Atlanta for a while. And... Uh, that brown river, it's the uh, Chattahoochee. It's it's um, a beautiful place, and yeah, it needs to be protected. And and like you said, like the forest belongs to itself, because it doesn't belong to no one else. Yeah, the um, entire the entire South River Forest or Atlanta Forest, if you prefer, it's in my old home city of Atlanta. That needs to be protected, along yeah. with the entrenchment creek, which is connected to South River. Yeah. And then even going into Okefenokee and into the Everglades and you know, beautiful places of nature, right? Wilani was, Wilani was written as my own gift to the Stop Cop City movement that's still going on in my old home city. Excellent. If everyone could do me a favor, unmute yourselves and give it up for D. Allen. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic poems, D. Thank I you, did, Tori B. I did not know there was an old Battlestar Galactica, and I've got to watch it. In the old Battlestar Galactica, Starbuck is a male. In the in the other version, Starbuck is a female, which I never got. That's interesting. That is interesting. Make sure you guys get that anthology. Amazing. So make sure you guys get that. The books that we all talk to 
all put out such great content, right? And we're here to support each other. So, yeah, if you could post the link, D, that would be amazing. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep this thing rolling. We have Whisper Poet uh, coming up next. It was our last feature. It was a, it was a beautiful feature. Um, Whisper Poet, if, if you would unmute yourself and bless us with some words, we would greatly appreciate it. Talk about perfect timing. I have been driving for the last hour and literally just pulled in my driveway. <laughs> just a lag as she connects to the Wi-Fi. You know, you know how it goes. It goes cell to service to Wi-Fi. Come through. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah it just took a second because you you got to go from the uh, cell service to the Wi-Fi. Exactly. So exactly. Takes yeah. Yes. So um, I had a a writing prompt that I did, and the prompt was freedom. And so, of course, there are a lot of you know very worthy angles um, you can go when you're talking about freedom. But I wanted to uh, take it in the direction of when do I feel free? What makes me feel free? And uh, I've always been a horsey girl. So when I feel most free is when I'm on the back of a horse. And um, so I wrote a poem about um, when I was younger, I used to go fox hunting. And uh, that was my freedom poem. And that's the one that I'm gonna read for you now. And it is, let me find it here. It's a little bit long, um, but it's, uh, it's near and dear to my heart. So I hope you like it. Um, this is called The Hunt. Freedom backs down the ramp of the horse trailer in the cold early light. It reverberates with a hollow sound at each step. Ears pricked, velvet nostrils flared, bathed and brushed and wiped to shiny coated perfection. He is strong of limb and deep of heart, clad in buckled glory and girthed for flight. The group of us, birds, landed lightly to pick at grain, a sprightly handsome flock in gleaming black boots with our velvet covered hats in breeches of buff beneath black wool worsted coats and hints of gold vests. Our bone handled hunt whips coiled lithely, their braided beauty at rest. This uniform garb, a loving tradition, each piece heirloom loved. Our reserved appearance belies Vikings and Valkyries astride. Here and there, coats of red, the scarlet glowing like fresh blood in the mist, as red as the red of my cheeks made flush with excitement for what is to come. The hunt breakfast with smiling good mornings all around, good cheer and flasks tipped to your health abound. Stirrup leathers, stirrup cup, a taste of port thick and rich on my tongue. Horseshoes stamp on concrete to scuff. Our cups set aside. China silver and crystal on white linen make a delectable repast, but we will do justice later because now the huntsman mounts his horse. Teeth chewing 
on snaffle breaks as we ponder our snaffles breaks. Should I swap it for the Pelham? Is there time before we run? My eager eyes impatient as they rove across the scene. The hunt is mounted, flight checks done. Girths are tight, leathers right, buckles fastened, reins strong, ready to be among the throng. In the chill January air, the mist veiled low, lying like smoke above the ground, the stage where in epic tale, we will be both audience and title role. I strain my eyes towards the thin fog, but what Reynard has left for us is invisible to all but a hound. Don't you dare call them dogs. The whippers in arrive with the hounds and the excitement goes up a notch. Toenails clicking on the driveway. They pant and yip and surge with their tails held high and stiff, bodies strong and sleek, ready to run, ready to give us their song. The huntsman calls to them, here, 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 and they spill around him, an exuberant wagging throng, held in check by love and the thread of a leather-tipped thong. The huntsman sees all from his perch upon his steed, both steady and steely eyed. A war horse made, he knows what he's about. His rider is his charge. This hunt is in his care. Chest deep and proud of head, no mere horse he. He is both Pegasus and Bucephalus, well met and well bred. The huntsman shifts in his saddle, confident and debonair with his horn case strapped across his chest, eyes in shadow, red wool shoulders a mile wide. We await his command. Hooves stamp and my heart leaps as his case unsnaps and he presses his lips to the brass. Such a cold metal for such a soul-stirring sound. The thrilling brief blast floats out in the chill its effect electric, as with one voice and one mind from the throats of the pack, 50 strong, a ululating canine cry of response, let us loose, let us run, let us work, let us hunt. An errant young hound breaks for the field, his excitement and his DNA more than he can contain. A whip breaks behind and streaks like lightning after him, a fighter jet loosed in horse and rider shape. Elegantly deadly, she runs him down, his yelp of surrender heard simultaneously with the whip's crack. Abashed but still eager, he returns to the pack, and the hunt is ready. Tension about to crack. Electric energy hovers above, horse, Hound and human alike, poised on the break point of mad delight, we position ourselves for flight. The protocol of rank and order, a second nature bred into hundreds of years of tradition, who goes in what order when the chaos starts? We wait for his signal. He blasts his horn and off they go, the huntsman and his hounds and his whippers in, we, the field riders, wait, eager to follow them behind our own field master. He will tell us when. So we check our stirrups, and we check our girths, and we pull tight our gloves, and we watch and wait for the huntsman to cast them to work. In the bracken and the brush, they search for the scent, noses tight to the ground in the cold. Where is that Reynard? Where is he to be found? Then the cry of the strike hound bugling out, his find lost in the clarion call of the horn and the crescendo of hound song, 50 throats strong, while the huntsman shouts his encouragement and praises their success. 
every one of us now connected by the thread of the vapor trail of fox scent lying low through the woods. The hounds pour down that invisible line like a low running stream. There is no determining where one hound ends and the other one begins, and we launch ourselves aft, as in full cry they run. On the wings of the divine they fly, and we fi fly with them. Hell for leather we ride. Then a shout from a whip, view halloo, we hear her cry. Reynard has been spotted. To see him, desperately we try. It's good luck to see the fox, and like dominoes in a line, the row of black and red clad arms point to the direction where he was spotted. He is a celebrity among us. Cameraless paparazzi are we all, eager to dance to his tune. We pause in suspended animation, a collectively coiled spring. Then the hounds streak after him and we streak after them. We unleash in another headlong gallop, hounds and red coats up ahead, the horn blowing like mad and horses charging across the cold ground, the hunt in full cry. It must appear quite a sight from a distance. From inside, it's a tornado, a beautiful storm. This perfect moment of my existence in a freedom unparalleled as we dash in full bright color and form across the open land with the sky a smile overhead, horse tails flagging behind, this wild chase a rebirth astride. My horse a charger beneath me, the wind in my face, my muscles shifting sinuously in his rhythm, balanced and poised for anything and everything as he surges, long strided over the misty ground. Which one of us is steering here? Who cares? It's white noise to the thrill of the sound of his hooves and his breathing. In this chase, we are bound. I am welded to him by a bond that is more magic than science as we fly together and dash wildly down the hill. Riders strewn across and below, flashes of crimson and black, flashes of shouts and windswept words, the hounds still running strong on the tail of Reynard the fox. Leap the ditch and onward tally-ho into the fray of the glorious morn. Now steady up, here comes the coop. It's big, this jump. To hang a leg wouldn't do. I feel him gather himself beneath me as we each see our spot, then the launch of flight as we leave the ground. Time and gravity suspended, and I scream in delight of this moment as we sail through the air. We could jump a skyscraper, this horse and I. We land and gallop on an exultant and triumphant pair. My weight shifts with him as faster and faster we go. Skirt the field, cut left to the trail, branches whipping and slapping, then out of the woods in a hard right, charge up the hill and across the road for a hawk-bending halt, eyes wild with excitement. Where are they? Where are they? To each other we call out. There they are, shouts the field master, and again we gallop headlong across a field to the tree line where the hounds have stopped and are casting about. They search frantically for him, our red-furred friend Reynard, he has slipped away from us. He has fooled us. Victorious, once again, he has emerged unscathed in this man versus beast weekly challenge. We seed the battle and head for home. On long reins, we amble, our glorious run complete. In our loss, we have won, for we will come back to chase him again. Now back to the house for a tipple or 10. Our bodies sweating, but our toes are still cold. A flask of port is shared about to all who are parched from wind and hot blood. Warriors, we return with grand tales of the morn. We arrive at the hunt table exultant and worn, gleeful in our successful failure to outwit Reynard. We toast his health and his wily skill and vow to each other that we may one day out with him still. Freedom steps up onto the trailer for the ride back home. My boots are dirty, but my heart is full. Wow. 
I want to try to keep this quick so everyone could give you all the love that uh, you deserve for that. But I grew up in South Florida, so I've never really been around horses. And now I live in central Alberta. And literally in my front yard is like eight acres. The guy who lives there is the head of music of Calgary, and he has four horses on his property. And so I go and I grab my little carrots and I go up to the fence and I and they come over. And now, like, I've made friends with the horse. The stallion took me a while to come to me. But now he comes to me and um, my my doctor is. And 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 talking to them and it, it's helped me out. So, like, I understand that passion that you have for horses and I'm new to the game. And, and I, I just they're not easy to my horses, but I love going over there and feeding them carrots and just giving them love. So, yeah, if everyone uh, could unmute themselves and, and give love for Wisp Power for that amazing story. Fantastic. I, uh, the tension just kept building and building. It was great. I felt like I was uh, right there riding along with y'all. Yeah, that was a fantastic story. I really enjoyed it. My um, my friend has a um, a character that he d sometimes reads poems as named Renard, and now I can't help but think that that story is part of his origin story. He's the fox that got away, huh? <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he he dresses up like a fox and everything. <laughs> so now I have to think that that's part of his origin story. <laughs> He, uh, he would love it, I'll have to, I, I wish there was a way you could hear that poem. I'll have to have him try to come one of these days. Thank you, Thank you guys so much. Um, well, my Thank wife you. has been working the videos and stuff. Um, I think we just released like 378 videos. Um, we're starting to get caught up on the show. Everyone has their own playlist, um, just their poems out. So be sure to subscribe. I'll, I'll, I'll post the links out in another email as we upload more. So um, hopefully pretty soon you'll be show poem reading that um but yeah let's keep this thing going because we still have an amazing feature coming up um I have, uh two people to, to go to the open mic list uh before we go into our feature um nona l thank you so much for coming back we just absolutely adored you the first time and um it's so good to see you here again if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words we would greatly appreciate it thank you guys for having me uh Perform today. I'm excited to come back and I love the space. Um, I'm going to read two uh, bits of some work, two different works in progress. So, so they're kind of small, but I think they'll be pretty impactful. Okay. So this one is called What is a Lie? One. In the beginning, the Lord is sweaty. He plucks out one eye and places it in the sky and makes the terrarium bright and throbbing and it waggles its tongue petals esoteric naggings forest sacred duty a little rain won't kill nobody breathing to the gimlet eyed crawlies juddering from the slime bodied eggs under the lullabies of the shell shadow like a botanist to a monstera and our sweaty lord commands reach your zenith enunciate your sins crystallize your bones and skin, shine ephemera from within. While the other crawlies from the clutch crawled to the throbbing, I was the silver dollar eyes hatching from the leopard eggshell with obsidian teeth and bones who sneezed at the eye upon first sight, whose belly laughed too much light, too much light, and retreated back into the underbelly of the umbra, suckling the milk of luring tidal rhythm until my brain is obsidian as my bones. Chew. Mother's milk is no more. I cannot bathe my ears in the sibilance of Mother Ocean's dark, drowning the sweaty lord's wind song, taunting through slivers of light. Oh, you can run, but you cannot hide. That's the end for the first poems, first poem progress snippet. Now moving on to the second one. I remember childhood pictures when my hair was bright as a newly minted penny, and old women flocking in threes molesting at the moment mama left me to forge in the produce aisles, and how my skin crawled as they twirled their gnarled fingers around threads of copper. And I didn't have a name for it then, but I knew the stories of three little pigs, of Sleeping Beauty, of Snow White, of Ariel, of Little Red Riding Hood, and Rapunzel, and I sensed when the old one with bleached hair 
lips and fingernails bathed in the blood of apples, spooled my hair, they were trying to devour the youth of, out of me. I tried to shrink behind the cereal boxes, bananas, apples, and bleach, asking God Almighty, where is my mommy? Because I knew the warnings of fallen prey, beware of apples, of the allure of shiny things, of strangers roaming in the wildness, following you home. And I knew what a wolf looked like in sheep's clothing. They give smiles that hang loosely on sticky teeth, corners of their lips peeling a Weigh half of their face until it's all gums and yellow. As my bottom lip was buckling, they slid their sinewy wrists inside pockets of spiderweb knitted shawls and offered a handful of those strawberry church candies, aka salt lick for camp uh, for cattle before slaughter. They rake their tongues over leathery lips and begin to sing, "My dearie, won't you share your pretty pretty hair just a teensy weensy?" I'm bolding, and you have plenty. And when you shake your head no, you swear on every thread of your red-red head. As their tongues and teeth gnashed, together a rhyme scheme. Their fingers were growing around your entire skull. Thirty spindly fingers twisting red tendrils taut. And that's it. I'm leaving y'all at a cliffhanger. <laughs> No, no, that was amazing. I'm so excited to hear how those uh, poems progress. Uh, thank you so much for coming back. Um, can we just welcome Nona back real quick and, and give them all the love and for sharing a uh, piece that we're working on? And just, yeah, thank you so much for that. Everyone, unmute yourself and give it up for Nona. Thank you, Nona. You're such a bright spot. I love your that work. That was gorgeous writing. That was really gorgeous writing. Like, uh, like very intimate timing on 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 the vis vision you're showing, you know, so that that was beautiful. I love. It was wonderful pieces. beforehand i think i might be lagging i got an unstable internet connection thing again i don't know if you guys can hear me or not um hopefully you can hear me in the announcement so it was going to be um tory but they went through a dead zone maybe we'll catch her at round two but coming up next we have um an amazing poet Principe. If you guys aren't following Principe on Instagram, I recommend you follow Principe on Instagram. They release some always Hello, my name is Prince P. I'm reading read my poem called Laundry Talk, Laundry Trip, Laundry Mat Trip. <laughs> Wookie trip to the laundry mat are met with time well spent, trying to be dirt free. No, I meant to be, no, no, I meant to feel good. I mean, I meant to, to feel good. No more, no more like a sense of relief knowing I can't take care of me. Patient, patient is the virtue, especially at the laundromat. I wait and I wait. I, I'm at the doctor's office. Time is ticking. I mean, tinkering, tinkering with my tinkering with my free time. In the meantime, I tinker with modern technology. Getting to the finale. Finally, I grab my clothes, laundry, a clothes are clean as my mind. No, no free sacks, but Andre got into the house. I know my clothes smell like roses. Poem. Oh, I loved that last line. I know my clothes smell like roses. Uh, 
Thank you so much, friends, for sharing with us. Welcome. So, I need to reset my photo before I go into the feature because I don't want it to lag and me to miss anything. So, um, if you guys could give me five minutes again to reset before we go into Zomkanto's feature, maybe uh, Miss Diane Ward, if you would like to um, read a piece and, and kind of just keep the energy going, you know, and 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 and, and uh, we'll, we'll move in from in, from you to uh, Zomkanto. I just I don't want to miss okay. it, and I know I'm breaking up. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'll be back okay. in like three minutes. If you can just entertain the room for me, I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm going to, uh, good evening, everyone. Good day, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to read a piece I wish I had written, but I didn't. I have to give credit to uh, Ms. Avacha. Avacha wrote a book recently. I've mentioned it to you before. With every step I take to see it. And it is um, Torian Horn Press, Petaluma, California. And this is called Naval to Naval in Argentina. Remembering the majesty of tango. Irago. Okay. I remember the sensual music and mystical dancing. Air so full of sweaty bodies you could taste it. The atmosphere saturated with our arrogant pride a totally wild creativity. We were beautiful black dancers celebrating ourselves in self-proclaimed temples anywhere. Me, remembering those days, ecstatic days, dancing with you. Pure, free, and a slave to nobody. You and I. So mate, connected by eternity, dancing navel to navel, an exorcism in spite of the shadow of slavery, overflowing with unconquerable freedom, dancing possessed by the fever of passion, frantically but shamelessly smooth. Remembering those far away days like a flood of memories and a waterfall of truth. Memories tearing up the silence of historical lies. Unforgettable days that haunt me. Echoes of painful sadnesses. I remember those bloody days and our Africanizing nights in secret sanctuaries. Undercover happiness, forbidden joy. Dancing, navel to navel. Dancing in safe havens covered with tears. I remember the dusty, muddy dirt of our dance floors and the price we paid for the right to dance. I remember the magic of those nights full of stars. Night completely drunk on dance, sacred memories of an unforgettable legacy. You and I, two rhythmic volcanoes, two dark rebels, two black spirits older than time, dancing navel to navel. Our holy ritual against the divine law of the lawless. And I remember, I remember you and those days, dancing like we were out of our minds in the alleys, proud disciples of the church of dancing navel to navel. 
right in the face of the evil ghost of slavery, dancing with you and your bigger-than-life spirit. You and I, we were one, one body, one heart, one inseparable soul. You and I, bathing in the moonlight, one unconquered couple together forever and ever, dancing, dancing navel to navel in Argentina. That was written by Avacha. Thank you. Uh. Thank you so much for that. And I apologize. Uh, we've had a storm, guys. I don't even have cell service. My internet's choppy. So, Miss Diane Ward, thank you so much for blessing us with those words and keeping the show going while I restart. Um, am I coming in okay now? Am I choppy still? Or... All right. Okay, good. Um, again, thank you so much, Diane. Um, you know what time it is now. It's time for the man of the night here. Um, I consider him a brother. From the first moment I heard one of his first poems, I was just absolutely awestruck and blown away by um, the complexity and like the, I want to say the spirituality of it, but it's more of like an earthly bond that he has with these words. Like, it's almost like he grabs them from Mother Gaia herself and, and spills it out. Like, um, they're just so beautiful. I love every piece that he does, and I'm so excited for this. I've been trying to get this feature going for a while. He's so busy. He didn't give me a bio because he goes, oh, I'm just doing my thing. But this man's doing so much, and um, he's just incredible. Um, I'm wearing a rose uh, sweater tonight um, to represent love and uh, healing, right? Because it's, it's been a night for that. And I, I want to ask all of you now to uh, clutch your heart and send as much love and healing as you can to Zamkanto's grandmother, who is ill right now. Um, my wife, I don't know if you got that last message, Zom Kanto, but my wife's been looking up and they have in Canada here the bereavement ticket. And we're going to try to to get you over to Africa to see her. Um, and so if everyone could just take a moment of silence and, and send all that love and healing to his grandmother. The day the sun did not shine, all other points of light died. Except the rays I had collected from my days over time and secretly stored in your luminous eyes. <laughs> and I thank my foresight because anyone that had been watching closely to everything prior to this dark day could sense that the sun had slowed and started to withdraw into itself, as if he anxious over something, pondering over a burning question, while we were too obsessed with our own day to notice that the sun that we were using to cast light on the diamonds we were hoping to find was the precious stone to begin with. And that we should have been learning how to hold it without burning our palms. <laughs> but anyone whose eyes were open <laughs> could actually spot our own shadows folding shade by shade. And in a dream, I swear the sun paid us a visit to pry your eyes apart, taking it to heart that instead of helping it stage its protest, <laughs> I was betraying it with each ray I caught mid air and carved in my hands and covered your eyes to which you thought we were playing a guessing game. But I was actually planting a whole supply of rays 
knowing you would stare into my eyes anyway, even if you could see nothing. And in that moment, I force fed you in preparation of us for when the sun would decide to stop lighting our way. And the betrayal was justified because the whole time the rest of the world denied the sun even existed. We were outside like dream catchers, <laughs> observing it in our skin. And I bet if we asked, the sun itself, it will confess that, yes, <laughs> we were special because we danced in the sun as if it were the rain, as if there was another level of romantic and basking in it, as if I was cooking myself for you and you were cooking myself. You were cooking yourself for me. The perfect view, like two solar panels, with no desire to power any electricity except that between us and letting the spark created return back to where it started off as the sun's only magic trick. No desire to steal it like everyone else and trade it off as our own. My name is Zomkonto Kabadela. I was born in Makokova. My beauty is being a black child. And so black child, <laughs> black child, your blackness is not darkness. It is the beauty of midnight. The sky is where your beauty was born. <laughs> and nighttime envelops the sky to imitate the darkness of your skin and shield you from the ugliness of this world, black child. Did you know your umbilical cord is actually a musical note and that it sounded like a symphony when you split from your mother's womb and that your first heartbeat ushered and gave us the first chamber drum, black child. <laughs> you are the beginning of the sky and when the sky ends, you are made of the bluest of oceans. The sea envies the shores of your smile. Your beautiful forms the curves of the whole of the entire African continent. The ice caps in the coldest regions of the world melt from the warmth of your skin. Do you know sunshine begs to be as bright as you? You are a child of God and God wakes up to create sunshine from the warmth of your lips. I am proud of you, black child. May the black diamond you are shine so bright that you are obligated to, to, to shine with it and that is obligated to shine with you. I am Zonkon to Kabatev. And one of the greatest things that my life is made of is knowing that we are made of rose gardens. <laughs> I think like the one thing that we have forgotten as human beings is that um, we are rose gardens. So instead of giving flowers to the living, how about we start teaching our children how to grow rose gardens. Tell our children that roses have thorns as their only defense against weapons against them. That if we, they really meant to hurt us, they wouldn't tease us with their fragrance only to make us bleed. Because if roses were us, we would say they are just human. Let them breathe. Let them be. Because how many flowers do you know that have declared wars? <laughs> and if it seems they did, wasn't it because some stranger decided to enter a garden uninvited, too distracted to see the trespassing sign? <laughs> how many things do we put a fence around that would have openly spread their arms? 
but we are the ones that actually bear, bear arms to keep out intruders, protecting the illusion that to have more is to be the happiest. <laughs> Yet we barely walk in the gardens we keep from our neighbors. Wouldn't even tell one flower from the next, only content with the power of having discovered it first. Yet only the poor gardener that tends the roots and still shoots to replant in their backyard. <clears throat> That's perhaps the only one closest to the smell of God. My mother grew flowers too. <laughs> I think she was the closest to the smell of God. I think it had something to do with how she could not surgically remove the love she felt inside, lay it on the operating table and let it generate as much light as the darkest corners of the world. And those darkest corners of the world would have never been able to hold it. But even our own fathers, they were too distracted searching for gold, preferring to dig down than to dig deep into her soul. So her garden wilted in the sun with no one seeing anything different regarding what that garden's flowers had become. How their petals spread like colorful weighted wings, which only angels can dream. How they showered naked in the sun's rays until their soap skin was a miracle of illumination. They showered naked in the sun's rays until their soap skin was a miracle of illumination. How even the queen bee admittedly entered my own mother's garden discreetly <laughs> and started a hive in secret too selfish to share the recipe. How the ghost of every bee still swarms my mother for sweetness and the ghost of every flower that wilted shields her smile with petals weaving a quilt made of every aroma which pries the spirit open and reveals its innermost garden with no trespassing signs posted, except to leave everything the very same way that you found it. Zomkondo, Kabatela, Mzilangata, Mpangazita. So, uh, thank you for your prayer earlier about my grandmother, um, because, you know, right now, uh, the greatest prayer I could ever send to the sky is for grandma, you know, because she had promised that she's going to hold on, and I hope she does. If you wish to know <laughs> about my grandmother, It's heartbreaking. We're, we're, we're going to get you there, bro. You wish to know Jessica's already working grandma. on it. We're going to get you there. If you wish to know about my grandma, she is a grand piano whose keys accompany sopranos of angels from the tips of their lips into the most secret chambers of heaven. The rhythm carried to the tune of, of her feet. <laughs> A tune carried across the sky like a bridal train, whispering incantations of her tribal name, the one used by her ancestors before the world came to know her simply as Esther. I imagine her learning to answer to that name, Esther. Esther, Esther, Esther. A name she inhabits but cannot spell, which, which is good as well because names are spelled. And that name, if it carries the shame of its own ancestry, will not get to her and bleed down to me. But I researched it to strip it of any perversions and found that in Persia, her name was Hadassah and that Esther was a queen. No. So although she cannot spell it, it is by no accident that royalty is what it means, Esther. 
So I imagine every time she closed her eyes and rehearsed it, Esther. Because naming an African child is an initiation. It is a ritual that awakens the invisible cord that remains intact after the placenta is severed and neatly pegged into a blanket and buried in the brown earth at the foot of a giant tree. That way, the, the first child's cry is imprisoned by that tree's roots, even if that tree it, it, it chooses to gossip about it. And in case demons of the night steal it and make rimstones out of its purity. I mean, I imagine my grandmother's birth was attended to by midwives with gemstones for eyes and sapphire stones for nipples and breasts that hang like the pendants of the mountain spirits. Those say to have portals that lead straight to the front steps of every planet known to the universe. She knows wisdom by the feel of his skin. She has run fingers like a pianist along the spine of time, a spine so vast like that of a matriarch elephant. As she moves silently, vast like piano keys made of ebony and ivory, composing the songs that pulse underneath three generations of black skin, the royal matriarch of the house of Eswatini, Umakakula, Umtombeni, Itwala Minyela, Gojela, Bazalilinda, Gondo, Dunjwane, Zilanjisiyo, Msumutu. Your praise names are the blood that courses in my veins. Traveling pathways that raise the fires that bring warmth to my skin. I imagine your shadow follows you religiously. And even keeps your secrets intimately, like how you wake up at 4 a.m. to pray for strangers in wars, soldiers in coffins, emaciated children who will never know the love of their grandmother. You are well with the possibility, Makakula. Your smile is God's favorite memory, Makakula. You're the music that you play, the conductor and the sound, the singer and the audience, an entire population in one human being the melody to which every morning sings, the soundtrack to the rousing sun. So, Makakula um, is, is a reference point of, of myself and how I, I, I view my, uh, my, uh, my whole lifetime. So, it, 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 it. So I'm now like, like setting my prayers on motion each and every day, because I wouldn't want my my mother to 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 lose her mom. So this is this poem, is to those uh who's who's who lost their mothers. To those whose mothers have become a melodic memory in the sky. Just know your mother became God's favorite song. And that no one is actually allowed to pause it while it, it is playing until it has lived out its musical range in its entirety. That when birds migrate, they are actually on a trip to borrow her music in exchange for seeds, because she has begun a community garden filled with all the love you have hungered for. And that if you wake up sometime before dawn and run your tongue across your own lips, you might taste the sweetness. 
She does not want you to be sleepless. Put down the bags underneath your eyes because their weight is pulling down your happiness. And without realizing it, where your face was is just this heaviness, a heavy burden that morning fails to lift back into its position. So when you think that you're smiling, <laughs> what the world actually sees is an open wound as big as an island begging to be stitched together. Your mother does not want to be the seamstress. She does not want to weave you your silence. She wants you to speak, to say something, say anything, to not turn your mouth into a grave because she walked out of hers a long time ago. This is for those that think their mothers are dead and buried when in reality, they carried, they were carried well deep in their sleep into the most beautiful chambers of the universe, where they were given new bath robes and told to wash off the dust of this world. They found a three course meal waiting with food which tasted like the love they fed their children. This is for you, for those whose mothers arm wrestled my hand last night and put a pen in my palm and made me bleed this so that you know that the grave was defeated and that there was a trip door underneath it that led to to a secret staircase which ascended straight to the, to the sky. That as they walked in silence, they were allowed to look back as many times as they wanted. And then some got tempted to run back and carry you up the staircase with them, but they couldn't because you still have to climb the staircase of your innermost dreams. Keep climbing the staircase of your innermost dream. Don't fail to climb the staircase of your innermost dreams. Zonkonto, Gabatela, Mzilangat, Mbangazit. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually speechless. Usually I have something to say but like that i believe that was probably one of the most beautiful features that um it's so kismet the way that this whole uh feature worked out and you know leading to this and and i just i love you and i appreciate you so much uh for sharing this with us and um my wife and i were, were looking into trying to get your bereavement ticket for cheap um, we're going to raise money. We're going to get you out there. Your grandma says she's going to hold on. You're going to be there to hug her and to read her poem. You know? Trust me. Trust me. My grandma is one of the greatest warriors of all time. So, Well, I mean, I, I ain't even worried. it's your grandmother, right? Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> like yeah. she's a G. Like, she's an original gangster. Like, yeah. so I'm not worried about that. She could be going through that, but you know, I I believe that my prayers are strong. My mother's prayers are strong, so we good. We good. And not just you. that, everyone in this room and everyone who you've touched yeah, are praying and putting love out. You know, <laughs> together we are strong. Like I said, we yeah, are one good, family. Good. And, yeah, we stay because yeah. the one thing that we should always remember is that like um, poetry is in itself a prayer. And I think we do ourselves a disservice uh, when you don't realize how strong that prayer is, you know, like poetry is just like in itself, like this strong motion of movement, like you can carry an ocean and sea with poetry at the same time and juggle them. And, and you do it so well like too. <laughs> and we should, we should always uh think of it that way you know what i mean so all the people in my life that that are like doing poetry to the greatest of, of their ability please remember this we are we are not just like doing poetry it's it's not it's not for show sure. this is actually like this is the universe like saying oh my god bleed yourself out 
so that the world can heal. And I think that it is that healing that comes back to us in these many different forms of words and, and how we capture life. And please don't stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> don't stop doing what you're doing. This is, this is not about us. Our ancestry is too deep, like it's way too deep because our ancestors lived through some things that we cannot even imagine. Please keep doing what you do. And I love you from the depth of my heart. So well put. So well put. And I believe that too, that, you know, this poetry, these words that we do is, is something bigger than us. And, you know, we are all powerful souls here. And I, and I feel like even if people may not hear this, like us being in this room and us putting out these energies, like it's going into the collective consciousness of all humanity, right? So even if they might not know it, you just healed someone, you know? You, well, I, I hope so. Uh, because uh, un unless... Unless there is healing involved uh, with us, there can never be any actual, you know, because uh, I, I believe that our mental wellness uh, matters more to, to the universe than, uh, our, you know, our bringing rights about poetry and how far we go, you know. Well, like, we're all I, bits of I consciousness, can, yeah, right? Yeah, and because, if we, if we all feed into this dream. Yes, yeah, me and Zomkondu yeah. can jump on a stage and, and do this because I know I've been doing this. Yeah. But I cannot, I cannot, like, really change anybody's heart until I start connecting, you know what I mean? So it doesn't mean anything to me. Like, poetry, would not, the reason I call myself Zomkondo is because that's my ancestor's name. And I would never disrespect my ancestors. I would never. That, that's a name that, like, Zomkondo is a name that I would never disrespect. So that's why I try to bring healing to people using that name. Because I will never disrespect them. I would never put their name to, you know, I would never use their name in vain. So I knew that if I did that, that name, yeah, you would have to. It'll, bring it'll, it'll it get me time. that close that, it, like, yeah. it'll call me back if I started, like, being vain. It'll call me back, like, I will. I would have to stay humble because if I use their name in vain, that would strike me. <laughs> straight, well, you could be humble, but I'm going to straight up tell you, you are one of my favorite poets. Um, you just, the way you capture uh, human emotion and and not just human emotion, but like the the connectedness of, of nature and our ancestors. And like you said, like our ancestors have gone through so much for us humans to exist right now. You know, like for us to be here in this room and be able to communicate over technology like this across the whole globe, like, you know, they had to fight for it. You know, they had, they had to, they had to freeze. They had to keep each other warm. They had to learn fire, you know, like, and well, the fact that we're yeah, still here. It's, but, it's, but, but that means that Zonkondo called them uh, to be here. And I'm so grateful for all of you that actually attended this. Uh, because then that means that there's, there's a, a moving spirit that connected us together. Uh, I will never treat that lightly. Trust me. Like, I'll never treat that lightly. Um, and uh, for all those that, you know, that feel a little bit down, it's all good. It's been taken care of because we, we, we don't, we're not trying to do anything but spiritual talk and uh poetry spirit so um thank you for coming to share this with me i'm humbled i'm i i bow down to you may may your souls uh spread out to the universe as as beautifully as possible thank you so much some and um after we finish up the round one, we would love to get um, an encore from you. So if you could stick around and maybe pull out one more poem, I know everyone in the room would just absolutely love it. Um, yeah, so good. So love. <laughs> yeah, everybody, if, if y'all could do me a, a favor and, and just unmute yourselves and give Zom Kanto all the love in the world. 
and send all the healing energy to his grandmother and and let these two souls connect again you know you left everybody speechless as expected we're still processing yeah, i got right. nothing i got nothing to add it's just yeah. it's all failing no words and it's so funny because nona last time uh uh, you were the one that was when we were all speechless you were the one that had the words <laughs> and so the fact that you're speechless i'm speechless like some canto like you this was magic this was an incredible beautiful magical night and i i feel so blessed that you came to my space to um to share this with us all tonight like, i believe i said earlier that i can't tell if it's a sermon or a spell but it's kind of both and it's extremely powerful and you can feel that ancient wisdom move through him right from the love that his grandmother gave him from some canto the name of his ancestors like you could feel that that just ancestry and that spiritual knowledge and that this time just moved through his words, you know, and, and, it, and it triggers something primal in all of us, you know, and it's, it's just, it's, it's so beautiful, man. Like I was crying at some parts and I just, but, and then felt elated and then like, just beautiful. Like it was such a roller coaster of just, um, it was a masterpiece straight up. And yeah, we would love to hear an encore. I, I truly appreciate that. Um, and, um, um, I think like nothing would ever happen with people coming and sharing the space. So everybody that's just said these very kind words to me, I know now that uh, it's going to feed into the prayers to my to my grandma. You know, so <laughs> so now I feel happier because oh, I, I'm now in a space like oh. Trust me, we got so much love and energy now, going her yeah. way. Like she's it's hanging now, on. Yeah. My wife's looking like, up cheap tickets to get oh, you sent out there. Like when, we're gonna when, we're gonna make I this throw, happen. When I throw good words back to to my grandma and and and, and her ancestors, she she seems to heal. You know, like yeah. <laughs> so. You know, uh, I mean, well, like you said, we're casting spells with this poetry, it right? Was not spells. And so you when heard you, me, right? Yeah. yeah it's, so there's like a very that, healing. Every aspect name is, to is a spell. So when I say yeah. it's the Makakula, you know, her spirit because she actually comes from royalty. She's from yeah. the Eswatini royal house. So oh, that's <laughs> amazing. From the royalty clan. No, we we don't play about that. Yeah, like, that's, that's why he's so I dope, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you don't like, my that, royalty yeah, is yeah. something that I truly yeah. Well, that's why I depicted you in the flyer today as the lion. Yeah, right? because because like you know, you like are, when I walk out, when I walk out with my hair, some people are like, "Oh, this person, this person is about to rob me," and then they they, they cross the road. No. Nah, yeah, right. Like, oh, nah, you're he's hell? gonna he's gonna rob these, you so we with these love. For centuries, and develop your heart. This like, is yeah. royalty. Stop yeah, that's playing. royal. Yeah, stop playing with me. Yeah. Damn it. Nah, we are nah. we ain't doing that. <laughs> Yeah. But thank you everyone for your love and kindness and in my humility and from the depth of my um uh, my mother's household and my father's household my grandmother's household i thank you all thank you thank you so much so we're gonna go ahead and continue our round one um and then uh God willing, Zom Kanto will be around and we'll get a little encore after round one. Um, but yeah, let's keep this thing rolling. Um, Mr. I am Ward, I know I had you entertain everyone for a moment while I reset my router, but I had you actually first on the list for round one continue. So if you could bless us with another short piece, I would absolutely adore that. And I know Zom Kanto would absolutely adore that. It's been a minute since he heard it. I heard his comment earlier, like, oh my God, the answer, I missed your voice. And that's why I chose you to you know, hold space while I was resetting the router. And so I have you first on the list here. I'm going to go ahead and post the round one continue list so uh, everyone can see uh, who's coming up next. Um, I'm not sure if I've missed anyone because um, I was out for a bit. So if you're on the list and you don't want to be on the list, let me know. If you're not on the list and you would like to be on the list, let me know. In the meantime, Diane, could you unmute yourself and bless us with some words? We'd appreciate it. 
Well, I thought I lost my spot since you made me go on before, but uh, it's so hard to come after such a stirring and such a emotionally charged feature. Um, I put in the chat uh, directly to him that he needs to read the chat because there are really some fantastic comments. Uh, in addition to what we verbalized, I, I think he really needs to see that and and share that with his family. I get I'm, after the show, yeah. I get a text file of the chat. Oh, and mm -hmm. so I might just copy paste from his thing and and send it to him in an email. I I think he if would. If you can he would, read through it, would it all, be beautiful. I'm send it to him. Yeah. yeah, I think it would be beautiful for him to to see that and read that and you know, share that with his family. Well, I'm going to stay with Abacha with every step I take too. I think I read this here before, but I think it was so well received from her book. So you really have to get her book. I'm going to write a book review on it. Um, and this is called Bobby Was a Dancing Man. Bobby was 25 shades blacker than midnight. Blue black, they called him. Poppy was a pretty boy, a pretty man. Skin so smooth, he looked like he was carved out of ebony. Poppy never just walked. He was smooth like his skin, moved like a panther, like a well-sung song. Poppy was beautiful to watch. Wore his pride like armor like a weapon, like a shield, in cities designed to make him disappear. He wore his blackness like a badge of honor, moved through the whiter-than-thou madness with the grace of greased lightning, danced his way across stages that tried to bury him in the filth of their fear. Bobby was 25 shades blacker than midnight, the kind of unstoppable black that they couldn't hold back, no matter how much they tried. Bobby was untouchable. Even when they tried to get at him by trying to get at me, he danced in their faces on their sacred places and made a joke of their inner ignorance by stealing their shows on their stages and giving unasked for lessons on the real black power, his unshakable power, our undeniable survival power. Bobby was 25 times Blacker than midnight, 25 black times blacker than was tolerable by terrified white folks, by immaculate knee-grown jet setters, hair too bad to be so confident, too African-looking to be so proud, too loud to be so arrogant, too damn black or so they said. But even when black was never to be spoken word, they couldn't stop his beauty. I mean, <laughs> like when Poppy smiled, even the wind held its breath. And while all the foolish tongues rattled, he danced. He danced and spread his blackness across the whiteness of this stolen land, and he danced, and danced, and danced, and danced, and kept holding my hand, held on real tight, till I was strong enough to see the light and write this poem. Bobby was 25 shades blacker than midnight. Thank you, Avacha. Oh, I love it. I need to get her book. I love he hearing you read. Uh, you, and you did read the, 
that here before, but like I tell people, I listen to some of my favorite songs multiple times a day. And so, like, when someone comes out, like, oh, I might have read this one before, I'm like, no, read it again. Like, I, I want to hear it again, right? And it's just, it's so beautiful. And Diane, we just absolutely adore you. Um, and I appreciate you so much. And, um, yeah, like Jeff said, what what the per what a perfect book ends there for, for Zamkanto's feature. And I heard Zamkanto when you showed up, he's like, Oh, Miss Voyage, you're here. Like he was so excited. So so when I went to reset the router, I was like, I know what I'm doing because I know who's coming next. I'm like, I whoop. You, you, we love you. Everybody, if you could do me a favor, unmute yourselves and give all the love in the world to Miss Diane Murray. I love Diane from the depth of my soul. Wow. Diane, Diane I, like I have a, I have a very special place in my heart for Diane and I think she knows this, you know. <laughs> you know, every time I hear you read like I, I feel something uh like like there's a beautiful hurricane that touches the sky and comes back and envelops me with, with, with the pureness of his love. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. That, I could have said it better myself. Like, oh, that perfectly described the way. And even if she's reading, you know, a tribute piece of somebody else's, it's, it's just like, I want to write a poem to have her read. Just because that voice, like he says, like a hurricane in the sky that just comes down and and just, oh, if, oh. if Diane read one of my poems, like I think I would, that day I'll spend the whole day weeping in love, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I think I might, I might be sending a piece of mine soon. So, oh, so I would I, love, I oh gosh, I would love to hear it. Because, like, you know, I would feel it like, uh, I would feel it so incredibly emotionally. And so, oh, yeah. and I know you could probably write the perfect piece for her to read. Like, oh, I, okay, I'm actually going back. I would I'm be honored. Going back I would be honored. I'm writing that. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be, be amazing! I'm, I'm so excited to hear this. I Thank love you. you both so much. Thank you. You're very Thank kind. You so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and Ollie, welcome. I added you to the list here. Um. You'll be reading after Nemo. Um, coming up next, though, we have Thank Shaka you. G. Is it okay if I do a song, or should I read something? Um, it's all up to you. Um, there, we still have one, two, three, four, five people before you. Um, and then hopefully we'll get a awesome. little encore, Thank too. Thank you so, so much. Whatever you want to do. Uh, we have stand-up here. We have music. Um, even if you just want to rant. You know, you could yell fuck for five minutes straight and we're all going to show you love and just be. This is such a beautiful space. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, Shaki G, if you could bless us with some words on this night, we would really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I have two pieces I'd like to do. Um, and some points I just want to tell you, I, I know she's still here, um, but I heard something the other day that helped me a lot with my grief. Um, and it was that when the, the matriarch of the family leaves, it's because they know that you need guidance for the next step in your life. Um, and they're there for you and to bring you into a better place. So just remember that. Um, Hopefully it helps you like it helped me. All right. Um, first piece is a short piece. It's called Devil Went Down to Georgia. It has been known your God has always been the almighty dollar. Made a checkbook, your Bible, and prayed to the only God you trust. If your God created me in his image, then I am most definitely a food stamp in the 90s. Tax free. Just one bill at the candy store and a brown bag full of penny candy. I mean, I knew my worth back then. Didn't expect change out of people who didn't make sense. One time, I dropped your God into a storm drain and prayed for a flood. Had Genesis 9-11 beat into me instead. When your capital is your God, I wonder how much a miracle costs. Trying to borrow from a bankrupt heart will only leave you more in debt. 
putting your soul up for collateral, I ask you, are you sure it's God you're serving? Yo, hold yeah. up, bro. That line, I didn't expect change from people who didn't make sense. Uh, like, Jokey always goes inside. Bro, like the like wordplay on that shit. Dude, Jokey like, always oh. going deep. Like, oh, man. Like, you, that was, you gotta that was digest impressive. that. Like, yeah. You gotta put yourself on hold when you're flying and land, like, you land your plane again, man. Jokey always yeah. doing that. Oh, no, Shaki. I oh, fucking man. love you. Uh, Call yeah, me forever. Sure. Thank you for sure, coming, sure. coming is, out all the time. Shoki is elite. Like, is elite love. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the. Uh, don't shocky and drive. Remember, y'all. After you hear this, don't get in the car. <laughs> Whew. All right. All right yeah, we, so, we want to hear that second piece, baby. Let's do this. All right. So, um, I know she was recently arrested uh, for it, but this piece is called Fort Carly Russell. Women go missing every day. But when they finally decide to look, it was for someone who wasn't really missing at all. Just someone who tried to make herself invisible. And ain't we all guilty of wanting to run away? Start over in a big city where no one knows our name. I'd like to believe maybe she saw her younger self walking along the highway that day. Made the mistake of thinking someone else would help knowing that when black girls go missing, no one looks for them. They just search for excuses. Forgot to inspect the crime scene for a broken heart. Follow the bloodstains back to the last man to shoot his shot. Shell casings laid across the place she once called home. Instead of trying to hold her pain, they take back their prayers instead, turn them into anger, say this is why they never cared in the first place. Funny how all Abduction is only a problem when it's a ghost and not when the mind has taken the body hostage, baby girl. Some of us are still praying for you, hoping you find your way without needing to feel lost first, that you learn you don't have to disappear to be magic. Listen, I'm not saying what she did was right. I'm just saying I understand. Um, I'm going to drop my link to my book in the chat. Um, I'm in New York City now. now. Um, so if you guys want to buy a book, it would help me a lot you now. Know, I you you don't have to to disappear to be magic, man. Buy a book. Shaki needs some sandwiches. You don't some, have to disappear to be magic. That line. The line. Oh, my God. Right. Give me in the gut. You don't have to disappear to be magic. Appear to be what? magic. What? Shaki, like you're, you're on a whole mm. other level, and you're so humble with it, and it's just. You it's... don't have to disappear to be magic. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, that, like that's gonna hit me the whole night. Like, oh man, you don't have. To... Hey, it's yo, you, you broke some canto, yo, like. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to be, and then this is a real true stories, you know, like this, this has just happened also <laughs> yeah. to some girl in Zimbabwe. So like that, that's why it's, 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 it's like hitting home it's because it's like, this is Zimbabwean girl, yeah. like, oh man. And we have to always wait for them to disappear to be magic. So now we got to put them on posters and everything. Oh man. All right. All right. All right. I'm going. Jockey, your work yeah, everyone makes uh, sure. never stops hitting um, and in such a good way <laughs> and so powerful. Thank you. Thanks, you know. And make sure y'all go to shockytpoetry.com. Not only is she... Um, like she said, she out in New York right now. So, you know, any extra few dollars, we can float that way to, to keep the poetry alive and, and move. Um, and it's just one of the most amazing poets. And not only that, but like, for like the last year or so, me and Shaki have grown close. And we, you know, 
we've lost each other for all of it. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. So, uh, Mookie is not getting the attention. Um, so they can't perform tonight, but um, Mooney, we hope that you come back next Friday to Better Connection, and we love you. And and I, even though you're not performing, um, if everyone, peace out, D. Allen too. D. Allen, before you dip though, uh, let's all unmute real quick. Even if they're not performing tonight, let's just welcome them into our space. Welcome. I, I got to see Mooney perform last night at an open mic um and and she is amazing they are amazing um so uh i look forward to when uh, when we get to to hear them yeah definitely definitely and you're you're always welcome here with open arms and open hearts so and yeah I, uh we hope to get to hear you soon um I can't wait to. <laughs> you need to be out running. Like, why ain't you president by now? Hey, the, like, just, uh, so dope. We're going to keep moving on. Um, coming up next, we got. Uh, animal uh for, from like a past life when when i was living in the 70s before i was reborn in the 80s uh jeff taylor man uh he he does garage poets yeah as a, a man. Uh, tell us a little bit, bit about garage poets because i think there's people here who might not know and then if you could bless us with some words brother i would appreciate it that was my like spirit animal pose yeah I'm like being this is me being your spirit animal the, the garage poets yeah we do that every thir third Friday and um good news my um co-host Anna Jeffrey has um gotten a new job and will be back with us and um so potentially we'll be picking up some um some more some some doing it more than just once a month and um but I think if we do, we'll do it on a different day, just because I don't. I want to still be able to come to this, you know. So I, I don't want to. Ha I don't want to start doing it more often just to conflict with this, because I really. Well, I would love to make it to your shows too, so you know. Yeah. The, let's coordinate. Yeah, I would love to be able you know. to have you come in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but we'll 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 do it so it works out. You know. There's there's seven days. You know. So I'm going to do my poem on American Bricks Struggling with Paradox. The first brick refuses to buy a microwave. He says because of the radiation, but I know his family owns a toaster oven factory. The second brick became internet famous for getting smashed over the head with a vanilla milkshake. He tried to sell me a bottle of ivermectin, autographed by Joe Rogan. The fourth has a family history of being the fourth brick. Her grandfather was originally intended for the Berlin Wall, but was redirected to a blood bank in Detroit. She refuses to see the angle of her view has shifted even though she's pivoting from the same place. Brick 8 sits on the toilet retweeting Elon Musk. He claims to be advocating for free speech and decentralized banking, but I think he just likes smelling his own shit. The 16th Brick got on a bus chartered to DC, but was left behind in Atlanta when he went out for a cigarette. I'm still trying to figure out how we wound up being thrown at a cop in Boston. Brick 32 is a paid informant. He took online swimming classes when the pandemic hit, but he almost drowned because the connections sucked. Brick 64 unwittingly befriended an alt-right troll while volunteering at a soup kitchen. 
I've only ever heard them talk about addiction. Brick 128 thinks he's doing it for the reasons, different reasons than his white separ separatist friends. But I tell him that's mental masturbation. Brick 256 wants to start a riot so widespread we have no choice but to start over just so we can say he owned the libs. He disappears before I can respond. Brick 512 tried to overthrow the government, but nobody seemed to care or notice their numbers had been doubling for generations. Brick 1024 refuses to see they lost, but that doesn't change the fact that they lost. Wow. Yeah, it's American Bricks. You now you could read that on unlikelystories.org if um, you want to read that one. Uh, so if you could post the link for us, uh, that would be excellent. Yeah, I'll, dr I'll drop it. makes it easy for yeah. people to click. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And like Nona said too, man, that it reminds me of uh, that Pink Floyd, another brick on the wall, right? Like, you know, like, I, it's. Okay. And, but, yeah, that's oh, I love your rendition of it, though. It was, it was so much deeper and like. Thanks. I, I kind of like you know how like a brick in the wall has different parts. So this poem has two parts as well, and there's a there's a that's the second part, and there's the, there's a first part. So I, I actually didn't think of that while I was while I was writing it, but then I'm like a big Pink Floyd fan, so subconsciously I must have like that must have been yeah. ingrained in me because that <laughs> it just happened that way. But I'm also like a big fan, and I think that's awesome that it, that it did work out like that. <laughs> I love that last yeah. line. Just get hit so hard. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Just come in. Yeah. Jeff, man, we love you. Everybody, go meet yourself and give it up. Wow. Yo, Thank like you. the depth, the depth of your uh the depth of your agreement with your words is just like something that is so healing and like uh like when people arrive at that depth of vulnerability i just yes yeah. <laughs> something happens to me that is so different man and and the very like the very intelligence and bravery to say words that you just say is an incredibly healing one love thank you Zamkanto. yeah somebody who connects with the audience so gracefully and so intentionally and emotionally as you do to give me that kind of um respect i i, I appreciate that thank you of course really and thank you for sharing it with us you know because the magic of words is something like so beautiful uh, in our everyday existence, and for people um, like even <laughs> even thinking we are worthy to give us magic of those words is just one of the greatest things ever. Thank you so much. Um. So I, I crashed, I crashed again there. Um, hopefully I'm coming in okay now. Um, we had who's uh, supposed to come on next, but uh, they left. Um, so we're gonna roll on, but if Tabitha comes back, we'll throw them in. Um, and I don't know if you guys heard this when I crashed, but I was saying, I just, I love the love in the room tonight. And I, that's why I love featuring all these different people, you know, each week, um, because everyone brings their own energy and they affect the energy of the other poets in the room. And it's so amazing to watch it from week to week to just, you know, like uh, create these atmospheres that uh, we create and then we all get to 
enjoy and share and, and this experience, you know, and it inspires us. And the more that we hear words from other people, the more that, you know, um, we get inspired, we can create. So I appreciate all of y'all. Um, yeah, so we have uh, Nemo Soon coming up next, who uh, has been a brother to me since I met the man. I just absolute poetry crush. Can't get enough of Nemo. Um, just love this man so much. And so, Nemo, if you could bless us with some words, my brother, I would appreciate it. All right. It's great to be here. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to do a micro triptych that I did last night uh, for an open mic, uh, which is where I, I saw Mooney perform. I saw a vision of my parents as I imagined them as a child, like smiling ghosts at the end of the movie. And all was good and all was forgiven. And my heart leapt like finding home at last like recognizing the face of a loved one, like something real instead of phantoms, instead of the dreams of little boys, instead of something I created to try to make sense of my broken family. I find my pill case today isn't empty. And suddenly the day makes sense. I can't stray too far from my medicine because it changes who I am. My personality, the one I want, comes from a handful of little shapes and sizes with nonsensical numbers neatly printed that must mean something to someone who isn't here. I'm bound to this piece of plastic labeled with the days of the week so that I don't forget what it takes to be me every day. Personal pachyderms compact in peanuts capable of processing those problematic memories randomly accessed. To make an array, attach trunk to mother tail and send to search for water. Dust jacket included. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's my poetry bestie. Hey, <laughs> was um, is on some notes, you know, like uh, I I would love to take whatever drug that Nemo is on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get let's get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, uh, I feel that though, because I have ADHD yeah, like, and, the, and anxiety. I take the, medications, but. I'm on the wrong pills, obviously, because Nemo's over there. Intensity, though. <laughs> um, you know, the intensity and um, the intimacy of, of, of the words. Uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes that is a kind of level of intimacy with words is a very rare thing. And I think we don't celebrate each other enough with that. And uh, that that's intimately brought out in such a beautiful way and respect to you. Thank you, Zamkanti. Your your uh, feature this evening was breathtaking. I was deeply moved. Thank you. The one love my my friend always. I love you to use my perfect stuff because you just have so much to 
little words. It's like you could write a two page, you know, poem to convey the same effect, but you're like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to pack it all in and just left, right, jab, jab, just line after line. You're just like, oh, like I fucking love it, man. Uh, it's great. It's great. Um, so we're, we're cl closing up round one now. Um, we have a new newcomer into the room, Ollie. Um, I believe they came here from the open mic that uh, Mooney and you and Whisperport was at last night. Um, so if, if everyone could do me a favor and just unmute yourselves and give a big open mind, open arm, and open heart welcome to Ollie Ooh, to our space. Welcome, Ollie. Much respect. Much respect, always. Goodness, hold on. Oop, welcome. Am I welcome. Is it working? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Of course, now is the time I have technical difficulties. Oh, we got you on video. Yay. We can kind of hear you. See is you it moving. working? You're getting there. Yeah. We oh, goodness. <laughs> awesome. Um, I've actually not met anyone um in person except for Mooney. Mooney is one of my long-term best friends um and he was at um some of your events recently um and spoke very very highly of so many of you guys involved um I actually have a song that I wrote pretty recently um, and I haven't had a chance to um, show anyone really. Um, so I figured this was the perfect opportunity to do so. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, it's called Mary and Jane. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you so much for listening. I hope Yo. recently. <laughs> Yo, what I love so much about that was um like you were doing that nice little hum and whistling at the same time. Like at first I'm like, is is my brain working right? Am oh, I yeah, hearing this right? I've never heard yeah. anyone do that before. And oh, yeah. that is it's, fucking amazing. Uh... Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I thought it was that one was... of the oh, it was beautiful. Um... Thank you. I thought it was going to be one of the things that was either going to read great or read awful in um, the mic. Oh, um, so I'm glad beautiful. it ended up coming out well. Um, I just played around with it and was like, oh, yeah, this is a thing I can do. Let's put it in a music number. Um, turns out the one about smoking oh, is the perfect cool, one man. to put in something. <laughs> Where can we hear more? <laughs> Are you on yeah, you have YouTube? Where can we hear more? Um, I do have Instagram, but it's not like music dedicated. Um, I don't really have any music dedicated platforms anymore, but I'm just, you know, trying to get back into you artistic spaces. You Thank you. And you have a Thank you so much. I can cry. put it in the chat. It's just a personal, yeah. like, just pictures and stuff. Nothing special. Huh? We want to follow you still. You're part of the family, and you have a place here every Friday to work on your creativity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm I'm so thankful for the support. This is this is amazing. Um, also, just everyone I've listened to so far, just absolutely beautiful messages, beautiful energy, and everything. Um, I really loved Nima's piece. That was amazing. Excellent. Yeah, everybody, unmute yourself and give it up for Ollie and and come back. I want to hear more, 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 more. Yes, definitely. Please come back. Oh yes, yes. Like, Thank you more. so much. And keep keep being so inspired in in who you are, you know, because music is something so. Uh, so healing in in the greater uh, scheme of things, we we sometimes forget how everything in, in in our life is musical, and so we shouldn't take for granted how musical what we just been given was. Thank you for blessing us. Absolutely incredible. We love you. Yeah. So drop that Thank IG so we can so follow much. you and become um, friends with you. It's Come one of the best forms of expression. Yes. Thank you. Some stuff in the chat. Awesome. All right. So uh, that that concludes round one. Um I don't know if we're going to do a rough week tonight because um, I've had a pretty rough week. I know um, some content pretty rough week. Um, but I, I would like to request because um, Kanto could um, maybe do an encore piece to, to close out the night. We would just absolutely appreciate it. And love uh, okay. It. And, um, uh, <laughs> I want to thank you again, brother, for doing this because this is a, uh, all right, this um, is one of my favorite nights. I've been waiting so long for this night. And it's actually here. And, like, I've just been... I mean, if you uh, see that, me, that, I've that, been cheesing the whole time. That, that, kind of, that kind of took me by surprise. Okay. Uh, all right. So I pulled, I pulled this one out. Okay. So... The roses that we place on graves of loved ones become food for the birds that roam the sky. <laughs> so save them. Because unless you can prove it in words that those birds use voices of the dead to soothe the, to soothe the wounds of the living, then you are just giving away free meals to a species that would still sing for you anyway without asking for anything. 
Because love after the grave is a tricky business. And those invested in it have mastered the art of counting their human losses while numbering their roses. I know a child who was mad that flowers had to die for us to mourn the dead. <laughs> who knew that every bunch of roses is a second death? Because flowers are proud of their own upbringing too. And some of those rose bushes are still orphans up to this day. Who would believe them? If, if you told them that roses have been grieving their missing for ages, until they, they actually bled blood red, and that their innermost pain turned to a fragrance. Love after the grave is a very tricky business. <laughs> I know a family that are still numbering their roses. Thomas claims the last visit, but the whole time he was texting his girlfriends because the men under the grave that died before he could even form a sentence, didn't love him as much. So the world judges him and shoves flowers in his hands to give to a total stranger. And his younger brother fumes, mad that flowers have to die for us to mourn the dead. <laughs> Raging, because who would accept him if he said roses like us also wear mourning dresses too? Some of them white and some as black as a meat. That old garden is roses only bloom once now and die every other time. Who could believe such a child who stands in the middle of the town square as the hearse passes and grieves for the wrath instead? We plant rose gardens to, re to replace the ones that have wilted. <laughs> filing into symmetries in a religious sacrament with the God of the guilty, <laughs> seeking penance for neglecting the gardens inside each other. So we water each other's graves as if our chairs will open and the wasted lie and love that we never gave each other will grow again. What if roses are red because someone stabbed them in their coat? And they bled profusely. Some come to cover there. Yo, that last line. Oh, man, I love you. I love you. Thank you so much for doing this feature. Um, hey, what love. a beautiful poem to end this on, too. Oh, um, I would love to stick around longer, but my internet's acting up, and I know you've had a rough week, a rough day. I've had a rough week, a rough day. No, it's all good. Thank um, you so much. Yeah. And uh, we miss you, man. I know you're busy, 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 but yeah, can, yeah, because you like, can make uh, it to more shows. We, we you had, know? we had, like, I was, I was ready to go out to perform, and I'm so pissed off because when I was just walking out, then a hailstorm happened, in, 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 like out of nowhere. <sighs> So, you know, so, so we, we dealing Welcome with- Welcome to Canada. <laughs> so now we have to, yeah. So, so, so the performance might have to be tomorrow, you know, but, you know, I got a couple more, um, like that, that I, that I lined up. I'm going to Sudbury. I'm going to be flying to Sudbury to go do something as well there. So, um, and like I feel, I feel like this is a great time for my ancestors because now uh, I can I can thank them, uh, you know, thank them more for being kind to me, and that using the Zom Kondo name is is not something I'm I'm doing for myself, but that it is for them, and that they can take me to all these beautiful places so that I, I see places and travel travel the world you know uh i'm i'm, I, I'm well the world needs be, it the world yeah, needs you to I, travel I might, around and to, yeah you know, i like... might soon i might soon be flying to ethiopia in october uh to do a, a uh, united nations conference so oh man like like right uh, now my ancestors i give them their i give them their great beautiful praise 
because you know without them i, I would never see yeah i would never see, yeah, would never see this thing <laughs> yeah, yeah so without them i would yeah. never see these things and uh so for, for the first time in a long time i'm so thankful that uh i i can truly put my ancestors on a pedestal so that um they know that they are they are wonderful and praised so that they know that they like i'm one of their most dutiful and black and proud african to the death you know so uh so it's, it's uh, i'm grateful for that and thank you for the space i appreciate it humbly one love Self and give all the love to Zam Kanto. Send out love and healing prayers to his grandmother. Um, we're gonna get you on that flight. You're gonna go see her. You're gonna give her a big hug. You're gonna spend months out there with her. Um, and I'm I'm sure she's just so proud of you and what you're doing, and and just the way you know you represent. I've never met the woman, but. You know, the poem you read about her, and I know you and you told me earlier um, when we were chatting in text, like, you uh, said, you this know, smile thing, comes from her. Yeah. This because, heart comes from her. Yeah, because... because and so the, I, I'm so grateful me, for her because... What she told me was that, um, was that a hey, grandson, when you go out there to the world and you smile from ear to ear and you mean it, then you invite the rest of the world towards you. I didn't know what that meant at the time, because you know I left as as this very starry eyed uh, young man. But then when I started learning the actual mechanics of what she meant, I realized that she was actually right. Because on days that I tried to smile, just forcing a smile, the world didn't come to me. But on days that I actually like put it up like uh, some beam in the skyline the world came towards me you know? so, so i've now learned to gravitate towards that wisdom of hers because like when you truly smile because you mean it like a smile you know we we take it for granted that smiling is 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 the world's greatest joy because for most of the time we spend our time angry and we don't give back as much uh because we, we feel the the world is so miserable that we shouldn't that it doesn't deserve a smile but when you, when we give back the smile we are defying that misery we are actually coming right straight into the world and say you know what we are defying this with this smile and this one smile is going to be my greatest joy and going to be my greatest revolution for this day and so a smile can be the greatest revolution if you if you actually decide intentionally that my, my smile is the greatest revolution and i'm going to smile today just so that people learn that revolution one love Thank you for passing that smile on to us. And I think, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this off my face for the rest of the night. I'm just going to be being me ear to ear. Um, I love you, brother. Thank you so much for doing this feature for us. Everyone here is just filled with love and joy. And, uh, and I thank them for their love and joy as well, because uh, I would not be the same for their same love and joy. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Um, yeah, we hope that you um, excited to go on the stage. And I don't know if you summoned the hailstorm because you were a little too nervous or what, but um, you know, it'll have you know things happen. You know? But I'm glad you're able to make it tonight. You know, my internet's cutting out and.
Thanks for keeping up in mind, and we love you. Everyone, I mean, say goodbye, everyone. I love before I close on you. If you still want to love to. Stay inspired, everyone. Uh, you know, this life is very short. Let's make it a very long marathon. Let's run as hard as we can for love's sake. And uh, thank you for joining me today for, for the feature. That meant so, so much to me. Uh, you know, go out there and, and just like be the most uh, beautiful that your eyes can see. Be the most beautiful that your fingers can feel, you know. So, hello. Take care, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making it today, Thomas. No problem. Hope to see you guys next Friday. I love each and every one. Have a wonderful day. Hi, sorry, I was just uh, saving the chat and everything like that. Um, thank you all so much for having me. Um, and I'm so glad that you brought on the poet that you're thinking. <laughs>